Hello! In this video we're going to be talking about the enthalpy um, associated with temperature and phase changes combined. So we're looking at delta H. Remember delta H is enthalpy. So we're looking at that enthalpy. We're using phase changes plus temperature changes. Okay, so hopefully you guys remember from 1211 uh, the topic specific heat. So we're going to look at that very first as we need specific heat in order to determine uh, the energy required to change temperatures within a specific phase. So specific heat itself is the heat capacity. Of one gram of a substance. To calculate specific heat, Cs is specific heat. We would take the quantity of heat transferred and that is going to be in joules. That's going to be divided by the mass of the substance in grams times by the temperature change associated with this heat transfer. And this is going to be, your temperature change is going to be in degrees Celsius or Kelvin, doesn't matter which one. The change is what we're looking at. All right. So our specific heat is equal to Q divided by mass times by change in temperature. If we rearrange this, we can also get our heat is equal to our mass times by our specific heat times by our delta T. So that's generally the equation we actually look at. Um, we looked at this with a calorimeter. So in 1211, we took some metal, we heated it up, we threw it into some water, we looked at the change of temperature of that water, and used the specific heat of the water, mass of the water, and determined how much heat the water had absorbed. Um, so we generally look at these type of, or type of changes using a calorimeter. Some notes. Your specific heat is going to be in grams, right? So it's joules per gram times by degrees Celsius, or joules per gram times by Kelvin, it'll be exactly the same, but it will be in grams. So make sure when you're doing uh, these temperature changes, when you're looking at the temperature changes, that you're looking at grams of substance. Um, so you'll be actually solving for Q, you'll be given mass, specific heat, and delta T, and you're determining how much heat is either absorbed or released during that uh, change in temperature. If you are changing from a lower temperature to a higher temperature, that's going to require heat, so that'll be a positive Q value. If you are lowering your temperature, going from a higher temperature to a lower temperature, that's going to be releasing heat, so your Q value will be negative. So keep in mind your, um, so here's our notes. Also keep in mind your um, direction of energy, right? So positive is um, absorbing energy. So we'll have a positive Q, I guess. And then negative Q is releasing energy. Let me just write that a little bit easier. A positive Q is absorbing energy, a negative Q is releasing energy. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, so if we have our specific heat of our substance, we have our change in temperature and we have our mass, we can figure out how much energy is required to change our temperature of a substance. Um, specific heat, one more thing about specific heat that I want you guys to note, this is going to be phase dependent. 
So we are going to have a different specific heat based on what phase we're in. We also need to get a full picture. We need to look at enthalpy of phase change. So that's the next thing we're looking at. So this is what we talked about in a previous lecture video. So we have our delta H of fusion, delta H of vaporization, and delta H of sublimation. So this is solid liquid. Liquid gas. And then solid gas. Again, we keep in mind our um, our signs, right? If we're going from a solid to liquid, that requires energy, so we'll have a positive Q. If we are going from, or sorry, positive uh, delta H. If we're going from liquid to solid, we'll have a negative delta H. So just keep those phase changes in mind. Um, when we're actually solving for our Q here, our Q of our phase change. These are in joules per mole. Sometimes in kilojoules per mole. Okay, so these do not, these are going to be in moles instead of grams, unlike our specific heat. Um, so keep that in mind. So all we're gonna do is take our delta H of whatever phase change it happens to be and multiply the by the moles of that substance. Okay, to give some examples, we have water. Water has a delta H of fusion equal to 6.01 kilojoules per mole. It has a delta H of vaporization of 40.7 kilojoules per mole, significantly greater because now we're breaking all our uh, intermolecular forces that hold water molecules together to get to a water vapor. And then our delta H of sublimation is significantly higher at 51.1 kilojoules per mole because now we're going directly from a solid to a um, gas. Okay, so when we are doing total enthalpy, so Q total, that takes into account all phase changes and all temperature changes. So if we think about, go back to our heating curve, actually, I just remembered I have a drawn heating curve. So let's take a, a heating curve. Um, and we want to figure out Q total for this. So all of our energy. So we're going to start at a lower temperature. So this is when we were in a solid state. We were going from that solid state up to our melting point. Then we have our heat of vaporization. And then we get to a liquid state. Heat of fusion, then heat of vaporization. And then we get to some temperature. So we're gonna have several temperatures that we're gonna be looking at. So this is our, right here, this is gonna be our initial temperature. Then we have our melting point, boiling point, and our final temperature. Okay. Anytime we are in this first region, when we are changing temperature but not changing state, we do Q of our solid is equal to the mass of the solid times the specific heat of the solid times by our delta T. So we'll start out with initial temperature and then getting to our melting point. 
then we get to this region right here. This is going to be our Q of fusion is equal to our delta H of fusion times by our moles. Okay, so again, changing temperature, we're dealing with grams. Changing phase, we're usually dealing with moles. But pay attention to units, that's a big thing. Once we get here, our Q of our liquid will equal our mass, which is going to be the same throughout. Then our specific heat of our liquid times by our change in temperature, which is going to be the change in temperature between our uh, melting point and our boiling point. Right? So here, with the solid, our delta T is equal to our um, final, so it's final minus initial, so melting point temp minus T initial. Our fusion, we are not changing temperature. When we get to our liquid, our delta T is equal to our um, boiling point temp minus our melting point temp. And then we get to evaporation. So this is going to be Q of vaporization is equal to delta H vap times by our moles. And then lastly, we have this area right here where we have our Q of our gas or vapor times by our mass or equal to our mass times by our specific heat of our vapor or let's do gas to stay consistent times by delta T okay over just a little bit do 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 Oop, do uh, There we go. And this, our delta T will be equal to our T final minus our boiling point temp. Okay. So, um, you'll basically solve through. You'll have five total things. If you're going from a solid temperature to a um, gas temperature, you may start somewhere in the middle um, and you won't have all these steps, but if you do start at a lower than melting point and higher than boiling point, you would follow through all here and your Q total would be equal to the Q of your solid plus Q of fusion plus Q of liquid plus Q of vaporization plus Q of gas. Again, if you are starting at a liquid, your initial temperature will be the temperature of that liquid and you'd go from there. You may not start at a solid, so keep that in mind. Okay, that's everything for this video. We will start up again on another part.